Since its founding, 85 years ago, by my extraordinary relative, Henrietta Zold, four generations of women in my family have been members of Hadassah, among them a national president of Hadassah, my mother, Zip Fol Zold. My name is Betty Zold Cranus. I am honored to introduce to you the first in a series of programs conceived at one of the oldest chapters in the United States, Berkshire Hills Hadassah, created in North Adams, Massachusetts in 1916, based today in Pittsfield. Through its medical and humanitarian activities in particular, it is likely to touch men, women, and children of every race in almost every country around the world. The program today will attempt to illustrate the broad scope of Hadassah from its very first undertaking, medical aid and assistance in Palestine in the early part of this century, through an alphabet of endeavors at the century's close. But first, we'll meet the Queen. What is the origin of the organization called Hadassah? To begin with, Hadassah is the Hebrew name for Queen Esther, a beloved heroine of Jewish history. The story of Esther is recounted at the annual springtime festival of pageantry and sharing, Purim. The story relates how Esther's goodness and wisdom saved the Jews of Persia from an evil fate. Among its cast of characters, young girls choose to dress up as Queen Esther, the beautiful commoner chosen by the king of Persia to be his queen. Boys often like to disguise themselves as the villain, Haman. The idiomatic meaning of the motto on Hadassah's emblem is the restoration of my people's land, and offers another clue to its origin. As with many far-reaching decisions, the imperatives of an age impel visionaries to take a stand and lead. The following will place these actions in the context of a small wisp of history. In the year 1912, William Howard Taft was our president. In another eight years, American women would win the hard-fought constitutional right to vote. The world seemed to be at peace, but the winds of change were beginning to be felt. The decaying Ottoman Empire sensed its imminent demise, but still held ruthless sway over an impoverished, multi-ethnic community in the ravaged and disease-ridden land of Palestine. For millennia, it had not been 
the land of milk and honey. Mostly indifferent and absentee landlords were content to leave it to abandon until it was settled by highly motivated pioneers willing to drain and clear pestilent swamps, irrigate the precious arid earth, and establish an agricultural base. It was a sadly neglected land. In her memoir on women's pioneering efforts in the early 1900s, Rachel Bensvi writes, with our own hands we raised on our soil hundreds of shoots and a kind of bond was created between our fruitful little corners and the wild bare hills around us. We were participating in the great task of reforesting the country. Among the afflictions rife among the nomads, peasants, and poor religious population of Palestine were dysentery, typhoid, starvation, and trachoma, an untreated eye infection leading to blindness. On a trip to Palestine in 1909, Henrietta Zold, a vigorous and 49-year-old American scholar and Zionist, saw the poverty and dearth of medical care available to most inhabitants of Palestine. She was particularly struck by the large number of blind people and heart sore to see children among them. Trachoma was rampant. It was high time to act. Henrietta Zold's wide aim was to aid all the people of the historic land, including her roughly 30,000 co-religionists living in the ancient holy city of Jerusalem. She began in the city that was once considered the center of the world by its great religions. saw a rejuvenated Jerusalem celebrate its 3,000th birthday with much fanfare and rejoicing. Miss Zold and a small group of like-minded women organized Hadassah in 1912 and just one year later sent two courageous New York nurses to Jerusalem to help fight the spread of trachoma and establish a maternity center there. To the young nurses, it seemed that one mother in two died giving birth. Later, with enormous energy and initiative from a greatly expanded Hadassah, Miss Zold would be instrumental in saving the lives of many orphaned and displaced children by bringing them to Palestine, caring for them, and instituting training for their futures. The path to action by the fledgling women's organization was paved by a momentous event in Jewish history that occurred 15 years before, the convening of the first Zionist Congress held in 1897, exactly a century ago, in Basel, Switzerland. A Viennese journalist, Theodor Herzl, was the founder of the Zionist organization. The vital objective of the Congress was self-determination for the Jewish people with the establishment of a resettled homeland and a normal place among nations. For a large number of Jews, Palestine was the land that they had turned to in every prayer. I shall lift up mine eyes unto the hills. For many in the 19th century who considered assimilation 
to be the answer to the destructive forces of benighted prejudice, the shock of discovering that they were nevertheless lumped together with their less sophisticated brethren was a rude awakening. The worldly Theodore Herzl among them. Others, committed Zionists, living under brutal oppression in Russia and Eastern Europe, were among the first pioneers in Palestine and helped to shape its future. Let's go back a bit. The first organized Jewish settlement in Palestine was established in 1882, and a large tract of land was bought from the Turks two years later. The Jewish National Fund was established in 1901 to purchase land. Indeed, most American Jews remember as children filling the little blue tin boxes on their kitchen shelves with coins to purchase land in Palestine. In 1939, there were about 400,000 Jews living in Palestine, and the Arab population had increased substantially from the estimated 150,000 that lived in the area a century before. Draining and cultivating the land brought in its wake employment and opportunity. Social, cultural, and health institutions were established to serve each according to his need from each according to his ability. In 1947, the United Nations voted to partition the British Mandate of Palestine into an Arab and Jewish portion. This was jubilantly accepted by Jews. And on May 14, 1948, David Ben-Gurion became the first Prime Minister of Israel. Its population at the time was made up of nearly 1.3 million people with the numbers of Arabs and Jews about equally divided. The population today is nearly 5 million and includes every nationality imaginable and some we would be hard pressed to recognize. At Hadassah Hospital in Jerusalem, Patients of all races and religions mingle. They come not only from within Israel, but from all over the Middle East and beyond to be treated with the latest medical technology and the highest standards of care. In 1984, Hadassah International was founded and has expanded to include 34 countries. Through the Hadassah Medical Organization, it facilitates exchanges among medical and scientific institutions for important training, treatment, and research. Realizing the Talmudic injunction, if we save one life, it is as if we have saved the world.
Oh. 